Hey, I'm RC and this is another episode of how it's made in Raining Chain. In this video, I'll be covering item management. So I know I've already covered a simple item management system in my single player and multiplayer series. But in this video, I want to show you how it can be done for a full scale game like Raining Chain. So for those who don't know, Raining Chain is a MMORPG I'm currently um, developing. If you want to try it out, you can click um, the link in the description. So first of all, I'm going to do a quick overview of the different functionalities related with items that are in Raining Chain. So first of all, there's the inventory panel where you can see all the equipment, all the materials that can be used for crafting and improving your equipment. And there are also the random um, items. Items can be used, so you can open it. This is a dev tool. There are also materials um, that can be used at the anvil over there. And equipment, so equipment in Raining Chain are randomly generated. So every equipment is unique. So there's only one mace level 20 with power 318, etc. So this complexify um, the code quite a lot, like you will be able to see um, later when I will cover the randomly generated um, items. Um, so there's those items and there's also another category of item called quest items. So in Raining Chain there are 28 quests and each of them has maybe an average 2 or 3 items. So those items are special, they cannot be traded. So in Raining Chain there's trade. So for example I can trade that player and give him a bunch of rubies for example. Um, so quest items are special, you cannot trade them, you cannot um, like bank them, this is the bank. And as you can see, a player can have a lot of items. So you can have hundreds of items at the same time. And this means the efficiency of the item list needs to be um, pretty good. And you can also sell stuff and buy back items after selling them. So there's also a, a system like that. So now that we know a little bit more about the features in a Raining Chain, let's see how they are actually coded. So the most important class related with item is main item. So this class handles everything related with item. So um, there are three main um, variables. There's the um, inventory list, there's the bank list, and then there's the trade list. So all those three lists of items share the same um, structure called item list, which is this over there. And it, it's pretty straightforward. It's simply a map called data with ID and amounts. For example, gem one, this means the player has one gem. This is exactly the same structure than what I used in the single player and multiplayer series. So that class item list has a bunch of function to add and remove items from the list. Um, so over there I have add items. So you give him a list of items and it looped through each of them and it increments the count. There's also remove item, which decrement the count. And I can also test if you have all the items in list. This is useful for, let's say, crafting. You need to have a bunch of materials to craft a, a new item. Um, there's also transfer. So this is used when transferring item from your bank to your inventory, inventory to trade, trade to another player, stuff like that. So this is the low level item management system. Um, so this is not aware of what the list really represent because like I said earlier um, over there the player has three lists but those three lists um, do exactly the same thing. You can add item, remove item and that's it. Everything that involves other factor needs to be in the, the class main item and not in the low level item list. So one thing to know is that every module in Raining Chain interact with main item. They never interact directly with the item lists. So only main item has access to the item list. So for example, if you want to add items um, to the inventory, then you will need to call the add item of main item. And then it's going to add to the inventory list. And if I have other special custom functions to call, or logic, it will be done over there. So for example, whenever you add items to inventory, then I'm also going to emit a package and other module can subscribe to that emitter. 
So I think in that case, it's the achievements. So the achievement over there, subscribe to the on item. This is called whenever a new item is added. And whenever a new item is added, then there will be test for achievements. So let's say one of the achievement is having a gold um, equipment. Then whenever I will add an item, I will check if the achievement is um, completed. So I guess that's pretty much it about the server side of the item management. So just a little recap, there is a inventory, bank and trade list. They all share the same structure. And whenever a module, an external module wants to add item or stuff like that, for example, a quest wants to add an item, then it needs to call um, add item of the main inventory. And this will call the more low level item lists and do all them logic. Now, um, this is fine. This is all on the server. Pretty straightforward on the server. But now I need to notify the client that he has items. And this can be a little bit tricky. In my single player and uh, multiplayer series that I've released, um, what I was doing is that whenever there's uh, a change in the inventory, I would simply send back the entire um, inventory list. And obviously, this is not very efficient, especially in Rain Chain, where you can have hundreds of items at the same time. So whenever there's a change, I cannot afford sending all the, the item back. So what I do is that on the item list, I do have the, the entire list of items, but I also have a bunch of flags. And by flags, what I mean is everything that, that is different since the last frame. So whenever there's a change in the inventory, um, a flag for the item will be um, raised. For example, if I add item, I'm also going to set a flag. For example, A, the gem count is now 10. And at the end of the frame, I'm going to send everything that got changed. So I don't send everything, I only send what got um, changed. And one thing to know is I don't send the variation. So I could send A, the gold count plus one, gold count minus one. Um, but the problem with that, with only sending the variation, is that if for whatever reason the client misses a package, um, then it will be forever in desync. Well, if you send the final value like I'm doing, even if you miss a package, you will get back in sync on the, on the next uh, message. So I basically set a flag, then won't really cover this too much. It's kind of badly coded. Normally, you don't want your low level class to use function from the higher level class, but it was simpler that way. Anyway, so in short, this sets a flag and the, the change management system will know that it needs to send the, uh, the inventory list to the client. That's what this does um, in short. So just a little recap. Let's say a quest add an item. This will call add item from the low level class um, item list. This will raise a flag and eventually the data will be sent to the client. So now I'm going to cover a little bit how it works on the client. So the server sent me a package with the new um, items in the game. I can subscribe to a change of inventory. This is how it's done. So whenever there's a change, whenever I receive a package, called invlist, this function will be called. And um, one particularity with rain chain is, like I said at the beginning, all the equipment are randomly generated. So even if the server sends me a package saying, hey, you now have the item EE07HL, the client will not be able to render it. Like the ID alone is not enough to display everything. So what will happen is that, yes, I will receive a package with all the new IDs, but I will first need to um, make sure that I know what the, the ID refers to, like all the details about the item. And another thing, like I said, it's not only the randomly generated items that use that feature, it's also all the quest items. So like I said, I have 28 um, quests, each of them has a bunch of items. I'm not going to send the data about all the items every time the player signs in. I only send them if the player gets one. Um, so this is how it's going to do. So basically I check, hey, do I know the item? If I don't, then ask the server for the details about the item. 
And eventually when everything will be loaded properly, um, another event, like over there I was subscribing to um, inv list so whenever there's a change with my inventory list, but there's another event called inv list ready. So you can subscribe to that event when there's a change with the inventory list and every validation has been completed and all of the fetched have been completed. Okay, so now I'm going to try my best to explain how the rendering works. So how I'm able to display um, windows like this one. So how it works is that whenever there's a change in the inventory, in the bank, trade, shop window, whatever, um, I create a giant list with all of those items. I don't care where they where they are coming from. I just create a giant list, and they all share the same template. So in HTML, there are thing called templates, and um, they all share the same thing. And for example, when I display this bank, I'm just going to do a filter. So on the left, I'm going to filter all the items that comes from my inventory. So each item also has a, a flag saying where it comes from. So over here, I'm going to apply a, a filter saying I only display stuff from my inventory. To the right, I'm only going to display stuff that comes from my bank. And for the buttons, so for example, in my in the bank, the buttons are transfer. But if you check over here, the same item, there's going to just say crafting material with no buttons. So all it works is that in the template, I have access to the parent context, which is the window that is currently displaying the item. So for example, it can be the shop, can be the inventory, it can be um, the bank. And there's also another thing called the context, which says, who is the owner of the item. So for example, I can be in the window bank and the item can be in my bank. But the window can be the bank, but the item comes from my inventory. So in that case, it would be the one to the, the left side. In that case, it would be the one to the, the right side over here. So this is context inventory and to the right context bank. And this is like a, a condition to show. So if this is true, this um, div will be shown. And there are buttons. When you click on them, it's going to call um, different function. So transfer bank to inventory, for example. So yeah, all of that can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're not familiar with um, dumb rendering and um, libraries like Vue.js, which is what I use for the, um, the binding. So being able to put variables inside HTML. So normally with normal HTML, you cannot um, do that. So one thing I want to mention is that even though this solution works, it's not really ideal. So normally you don't want to put everything in one giant template. You want to split it in multiple parts. So for example, each window would be responsible for its own um, item um, template. Um, but in order to reuse code in HTML, it's a little bit kind of hard. You need to make components and templates and work with that. Um, but it, it's doable. I was just lazy with um, this code. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And um, don't forget to check out my game, Raining Chain. Um, the link will be in the description. So like I said, I'm still actively working on Raining Chain. I'm releasing new updates pretty much every week. In the last month, I've released the PvP Arena, so where you can do PvP with your friends, and there's a bunch of PvP settings. I've also released um, a specialization system, kind of like a class system, so you can choose to be a warrior, range, or mage, and there's like a, a giant grid with a bunch of abilities and all of that. So this was released recently, and I got a lot more features than I'm planning to do. Um, and one other thing I want to mention is that um, if you have more questions about Rain Chain, it can be about out code and stuff like that, you can join the Discord channel. So this is a chat where you can um, ask questions. So many players in Rain Chain know about that um, Discord chat, but I've never mentioned it in um, on YouTube. So I will also put the link in the description. So if you want to know a little bit more about how I coded um, Rain Chain, you can ask there. So thanks a lot for watching and see ya.